we begin with the discussion on lecture number 17 now so we'll talk about the complete lecture then the key points and then we'll talk about the faqs so lecture 17 is about understanding harmony in the society so so far we have discussed about harmony in the human being harmony in the family and now we are going to discuss harmony in the society and the process remains the same whatever is being said from this side is only a proposal for you to explore and we can listen to these proposals first of all then we can verify the proposals on our own right and then we can also experientially validate the proposals and that essentially means living accordingly when you go to live accordingly we behave with human beings and we can see whether our behavior based on this proposal leads to mutual happiness or not similarly when we go to work with the rest of nature we can observe whether it leads to mutual prosperity or not so society when we go to discuss so we saw that the family is the basic unit or building block of human organization and we discussed harmony in the family in detail discussed all the feelings in detail so once we are clear about harmony in the family then we can talk about harmony in society because family is the building block of society society is composed of many family living together making collective effort for a common goal so we all are there in society we are acquainted with society right now being society we need to understand what society means <clears throat> what form of society is naturally acceptable to us so these are certain issues that we discuss in the workshops we are revising the content here and then we can go to discuss pertinent questions so there are three possibilities and we have to make out what is desirable and where are we standing today so one possibility is that families are living together and there is a relationship of mutual fulfillment among them and that essentially means that we have a common goal we all are moving together in a particular direction so that is one possibility the second possibility is that people are living together but there is no relationship of mutual fulfillment we have differing goals right many times we are not even acquainted with others while living together in a society and the third possibility is that we are living separately and we are in a position of struggle and there are conflicting goals so we have to make out what is desirable for us and where do we stand today so if you see the first possibility uh, we'd like to call it a society when you look at the second possibility it is just like a crowd and when you look at the third possibility we can call it a battlefield when we have conflicting goals isn't it now what is desirable if you try to make out so certainly you would like to see for ourselves that would like to be in a state where we can term this as society and not as a crowd or as a battlefield though if you look at the state today it is more or less a crowd or a battlefield isn't it so the way we are residing today in the colonies many times we are not even acquainted with our neighbors we are not even acquainted with the people living in the same tower so it has become like a crowd and we can see that there is so much of resource being spent on fighting wars developing ammunitions so again the scenario becomes something like a battlefield so that desirable state is society but we might be living like a crowd or a battlefield and let me say that this is just uh, an overall appraisal right and we can have a look at this but again it is for us to uh, make the appraisal for the current state so we'll explore about the goal of human being living in society we'll also explore about the dimensions of systems required to achieve the common goal and we'll also talk about the scope of the systems so the scope of the systems will be discussed in lecture number 18 presently we'll focus more on the human being living society or the dimension of society required to achieve the human goal <clears throat> now all of us have gone through the workshop we are acquainted with these terms we'll revise that so 
looking at the common goal the human goal so one goal is to ensure right understanding right feeling that leads to happiness in every individual so can we see this that as a society our first goal is to ensure right understanding right feeling in every individual so that every individual is lead, able to lead a happy life the second goal can be to ensure prosperity in every family right the third goal would be we we'll talk at the societal level to ensure fearlessness that is feeling of trust among human beings and fourthly to ensure coexistence that is mutual fulfillment in the nature or existence so we have tried to make out whether these goals appeal to us naturally and i hope we are uh, in agreement with this but again we we'll take up some questions pertinent to discussion on human goal so let us try to find out whether all four are required they are desirable or we can leave something out so can we drop something out from here and if we achieve all these four then what else should be required now many times while going through the workshop we are able to give a consent uh, from our side that yes this is fine but maybe in our imagination we have certain more ideas thoughts which may appear as goals so again that we can explore if all these four goals are met what else should be required or can we drop any of these and are we working for all the four in the family in the society so where are we standing today are we really working out our program to achieve these four goals even at the level of family are we clear that as a part of society we have to ensure these four goals and what would be the sequence and priority of effort on these four goals so where do we start from so we'll see that ultimately happiness is going to be ensured in the human being so we have to start from the human being and we also saw in the previous lectures that our basic aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity and going further you can see that the feeling of prosperity is a part of feeling of happiness so uh, the first goal the first and foremost task for any human being is to ensure for oneself right understanding right feeling while discussing the basic requirements to fulfill the basic aspiration also we could see this clearly that uh, to ensure right understanding in myself is my first priority so this is the first priority because with right understanding only we are able to make out the correct need for physical facility for body and we are also able to make out the right processes to ensure the availability of physical facilities to nurture the body to protect the body to rightly utilize the body with right understanding only i am able to understand the feelings of trust respect affection going up to love isn't it and with right understanding only i am able to see my correlation with the rest of nature with physical order with bio order right this is something that we we'll discuss in the forthcoming lectures so with every unit in nature we can see our relationship with water air birds soil metals non metals everything with animals with birds so we can start from here the next uh, or priority could be to ensure prosperity in the family right and then fearlessness in society and now when we are able to live among ourselves with the feeling of happiness with the feeling of prosperity with fearlessness then we can be in a better position to take care of the nature right but this priority doesn't mean that once i am working for uh, this right understanding i will not be taking care of the other three rather i will focusing here on right understanding and in that process in the process of verification and validation i will be taking care of all the other three if you look at the current state there is something that again we have discussed in detail in the workshops it might be the case that we are standing somewhere here there could be assumptions that money is everything right so in place of ensuring right understanding 
we are preconditioned to think in multiple ways like this focused on physical facilities and they are also not even being able to see the need of physical facility and rather only thinking in terms of money and assuming that every moment i am going to be happy only if i have abundance of money abundance of wealth and if you look at the current state of education this notion has become somewhat prevalent among the human beings right from childhood we, the students or the children are somehow uh, made to think that money is everything money is there then everything will be there isn't it this kind of notion has got prevalent among the children among the families in the whole society right there again since uh, the focus is not on the right understanding part so these kinds of assumptions like money is everything right lead to notions of accumulation so in place of working for prosperity we are many a times misguided to go for accumulation and that also by any means now by any means means that many a times we go for corruption we go for mal practices to just accumulate even if you open uh, i'll say uh, media on the net okay if you try to read even news today you will see that on the upper part of the web page there is a news and then on the bottom you will see that there are so many items uh, suggesting that you can become a billionaire in a month by going for this particular mean right these kinds of messages are being spread that you can become a billionaire a millionaire in such a short span of time if you adopt this kind of process so somehow this kind of notion that i have to accumulate as much as possible by whatever means possible this has also become somewhat prevalent in the families if you look at the society in place of working for fearlessness there is an environment of domination exploitation fear intimidation these kinds of things are there in the society today isn't it and in place of working for coexistence we are trying to master over nature we are trying to exploit the nature and you can see that these red crosses are placed here because this is not acceptable to us naturally this is certainly not acceptable to us naturally but we have somehow landed up in a state when we are making programs like this and we can see that unhappiness is there deprivation is there fear is there okay there are questions on sustainability of the human race on this planet these kinds of issues are being discussed today now when we have these wrong notions these wrong programs in our living then we can see then that there is obsession for consumption obsession is a kind of madness that has gone into the imagination of the human being that i have to consume as much as possible obsession for consumption obsession for profit in exchange i have to make as much profit as possible by exploiting the other by depleting the other okay and then there is an obsession for sensual pleasure that i have to get happiness through sensation that i get from the body and as we explored in the previous session that sensation is an information only an information that i get from the body right and that sensation has a proper role to play in ensuring health of the body but when i try to derive happiness out of sensation then that becomes a kind of obsession because that has no limit the desire for happiness is there in continuity while the pleasure that i derive from sensation is only limited in time and then to have as much possible as possible as much happiness as possible it goes into obsession so these three kinds of obsession can be observed if you turn on the tv today if you turn on you know, the media today you can see that Uh, there are news even promoting obsession for consumption obsession for profit making obsession for deriving sensual pleasures then we can also see that today nations are spending a lot of physical facility a lot of resources on terrorism war there are some nations which are called as developed which are also spending more than 50% of their gdp or their budget preparing for war making weapons for war selling weapons for war many times it appears as if some nations have made it the proper business of themselves uh, to sell war weapons 
then uh, we can see that at the level of nature there is resource depletion there is pollution right and a lot of un cries there across the globe every year uno declares that uh, these issues are on the rise and we have to do something there is talk of uh, sustainable development today they talk of uh, adopting new measures so that the human uh, civilization can continue on the planet but you can see that at the same time the resources are getting depleted fast very recently there was forest in the uh, there was uh, this fire in the amazon forest even in australia there was some fire and you can see how the resources are getting depleted right this pollution so much of pollution the ppm level in the air is going up so we are acquainted with uh, the current state of society but we have to really make out how to move ahead from here are we going to continue with this kind of state or we have a proper program for us to fulfill the human goal there is a book called limits to growth uh, by the club of rome that what published in 1972 and that says that the report is uh, extremely controversial because it predicts dire consequences if there is no not a slow down of this growth the current notion of growth and basically that is throughput of the raw materials from nature in 50 years and the prediction was made for 2022 so the book suggests that there is environmental breakdown now there is a breakdown of human relationship leading to wars and there is also mental breakdown the psychosomatic problems are on the rise and uh, if you look at the data for 2016 it was the hottest year in india's uh, recorded history and the temperature went above 51 degrees celsius the global atmospheric uh, level for co2 was above 400 ppm way beyond the stable norm of 300 ppm over 50% of tax money spent globally on preparing for war the world health organization statistics show increasing obesity which is greater than 30% depression is above 10% suicide rates above 0.1% in the developed nations so you can see now these are certain catastrophic things that we can observe now whether we are going to continue with this or we have to do something about this okay this is a major question many a times we do talk about problems we highlight the data there are some societies also working to uh, publish the data glo globally there are uh, movements going on also to raise these issues but ultimately we keep on talking about problems but we do not present a sustainable solution to these problems and a sustainable solution would mean that we are able to achieve the human goal unless that vision is clear we can talk about problems but we can still continue with the problems so the program uh, that we are uh, taking up now the course on human values uh, if you see it has a huge possibility in developing this kind of vision for going ahead from the current state uh, then there is again an appraisal i think rajul bhaiya would like to comment something upon this rajul bhaiya yeah on this it is simply uh, articulating some of the problems that are there on the left hand side it is about the human being individuals the families uh, and the society and on the right side is to do with the human relationship with nature rest of nature so this has already been covered one uh, uh, you know couple of them which are highlighted i will say uh, in addition to the problems that kumar already mentioned um, the recourse to alcoholism drugs and things like that has increased uh, and even across uh, international or national borders uh, it is being promoted by uh, you know various uh, special interest groups Uh, the increase in population is another major issue increase in population is a human made thing human population increase um, breakdown of the family system is a major concern um, 
divorce and you know breakdown of the uh, the f family system it is leading to societal breakdown so all these problems we are all well aware of uh, on the right hand side is the issues with um, uh, the rest of nature uh, one thing that is very alarming is the carbon dioxide content has gone beyond 418 or so if we take uh, today's uh, uh, this thing and it is giving rise to a lot of breathing issues for human beings and uh, you know influenza like diseases and all that it's a major reason for that there is uh, soil infertility water insecurity food insecurity is coming I mean, uh, so all those things are there um, and the reasons are basically that we are working not for a society for well-being of all, but rather we are working for what Kumar was mentioning in the previous slide. So that's it from my side, Kumar. So there is something for, uh, <coughs> for self-reflection here. So how much of your imagination is about these naturally acceptable human goals, how to achieve them and slowly transition from present society to the human society? And how much of your imagination is about the problems in the present society and how to manage it? This is something that we can observe that are we thinking in terms of fulfilling the human goals or we are just struggling with these problems and trying to make some uh, piecemeal solutions, some makeshift arrangements. So many times we are able to observe these problems, but we are not able to have a holistic vision for a human society. And we keep on struggling with these problems. We keep on fighting with these problems and even adding to these problems at the same time. So we have to observe our imagination in a day, right? How much of my imagination is governed by preconditionings? How much of it is governed by sensation? And what part of my imagination has its source in my natural acceptance or is based on my right understanding. So you'll see that mostly we keep on thinking in terms of somehow coming out of these problems, okay, or at least reducing the problems. And you see that we may even try to uh, sort out some problems at one level, at the same time we add up to the problems at the other level. Right, because the complete vision is not there, the clarity is not there. So this is something that we have to think about, something that we have to observe for ourselves. So this is the right priority when you talk about the human goals. And to fulfill the human goal, we have to have certain programs, certain systems, which are called as dimensions of society. So one dimension of society is education and scar. The other dimension is health and self-regulation. Third dimension is production work. Fourth dimension is justice and preservation. Fifth dimension is exchange and stories. So again, I'll say that we are acquainted with all these words, but we'll little bit go into detail. Now, <clears throat> when you try to relate these five dimensions to the four goals, we can relate like this. So this is kind of mapping that has been done, but we see that this right understanding is related directly or indirectly with every dimension, right? Uh, but overall, if you see, this kind of mapping can be done. So many times when we present this mapping in the workshop, there are also discussions about why not map this particular goal to that particular dimension. So that can be taken care of. So how much it is directly related and how much it is indirectly related, this kind of uh, uh, articulation can be done. So this education sanskar <coughs> is directly related to right understanding. When we are working on education sanskar, we are able to develop the right understanding and right feeling in the children, right? While we are working for health and self-regulation, now as you discussed earlier also that with a feeling of self-regulation only, we are able to make out clearly the need for physical facility. So of course, this is related to prosperity, right? And when we are doing production, then also we are able to produce physical facilities which are necessary for taking care of the body. So again, it is related to prosperity. But again, when we are working for physical facilities, it is of course related to the nature also. 
because unless we understand the coexistence with the nature, we are not able to make out the right processes for production and work. Similarly, with a feeling of self-regulation, <clears throat> we need to make out what kind of physical facilities are available around me and how to ensure them for regulating the body properly. So again, that is related to coexistence in the nature. Now, the program for justice is directly related to fearlessness in the society. The program for preservation is mapped to uh, coexistence in the nature here. And if you talk about exchange and storage, so through exchange, we are able to ensure the fulfillment of the need of every family because every family will not be producing everything for oneself. So we're able to ensure prosperity in every family. And that also relates to justice because when we are exchanging physical facilities, then we have to ensure mutual fulfillment in the human relationship also. And a similar thing is there with the storage part. Right? So this kind of mapping can be done. Now, when we talk about education, so education is basically to develop the right understanding of the harmony at all levels of our being, right from self to the entire existence. So this is the core content of education. And sanskar is the commitment, the preparation, and the practice of living in harmony. And that preparation includes learning the skills and technology for living in harmony at all levels, from self to the entire existence. So education is developing the right understanding. And the commitment that we develop, the preparation that we make, the practice that we do for living in harmony becomes our sanskar. So education and sanskar go together. And earlier also in the morning sessions, we have made an appraisal of the current state of education, how much of it is uh, focused on education and developing this kind of commitment, preparation and practice and how much it only goes on passing on some information. So we're not going to do that right now. So <clears throat> if you look at the uh, human education, right? So uh, through human education, we are able to develop the next generation so that we are able to ensure the understanding and the feeling in the student. And that uh, paves the way for transformation from the current state to the coveted, the desired state. Okay. So through human education, we are able to make a personal transformation. And that personal transformation becomes a pillar for societal transformation. Now, if you look at ourselves, through this kind of input, we are able to develop ourselves. We are trying to transform ourselves. And our transformation has a huge role to play in the societal transformation. So this kind of transformation is desirable. But again, we can make it out whether we have to go about this or not. Now, if you look at uh, this cycle that has been shown here. So once we have this kind of education in place where we are able to address the need for right understanding relationship and physical facility correctly, then we are able to develop the human consciousness in the individual. And that individual is now having a clear vision of the human society. And when he goes to participate in the society, then he is able to participate in developing this kind of consciousness in every human being. So this becomes a kind of tradition. On the other hand, when the right education is not there in place, then the focus is only on physical facilities. And then <clears throat> uh, unknowingly, unintentionally, people go for accumulation, consumption, right? And this becomes an obsession. And then this person who goes through this kind of process, the unintended, undesirable education, right? Process, then uh, he or she is adding up to the problems of the society. And that society, again, leads to uh, this kind of conditioning in others. And that becomes, again, a wrong kind of chain and inhuman tradition. So from here, something that is written on the bottom side, we have to move to the uh, some uh, state which is written on the top, right? And this is only progress of society. So when you have to articulate the progress of our family, when you have to articulate the progress of our neighborhood, our society, okay, our extended family, our nation, then we have to exactly look into this kind of process. Is this process being enabled or not? Or we are just thinking in terms of adding up to the physical facility, isn't it? Then uh, we also talked about self-regulation and health earlier. So self-regulation is the feeling of responsibility for nurturing the body, protecting the body, and rightly utilizing the body. So this is something that we can articulate for ourselves. So uh, I think this was discussed in detail also. <clears throat> so we can make out, uh, is there any other purpose for physical facility? Now, if you are 
able to see so clearly that physical facilities required only for these three purposes right one purpose being nurturing the body then protecting the body and then right utilizing the body then we are able to make out the need for physical facility clearly so on one hand it gives me a feeling of prosperity and a natural outcome of this feeling of self regulation is health so asked and what is health so the body acts according to self that is me so the way i want to use my body as an instrument it acts accordingly and at the same time the parts of the body are in harmony they are in order so i am able to use my body accordingly like in accordance my uh, basic aspiration only when the parts of the body are in harmony so this self regulation naturally helps me recognize the need for physical facility rightly and we talked about these uh, things in detail uh, i think i'll invite shamila didi to comment on this just to revise this to the extent possible yeah um i'll just um, briefly go over it because we've already discussed this in lot of detail in the workshop also so um uh, for the program for uh, health we need to have this feeling of self regulation and with that feeling of self regulation we can make an effort to stay healthy uh, by being careful about our intake about our daily routine which is our lifestyle and doing a little bit of labor working with nature uh, this helps to keep the body parts um, moving and uh, uh, active and also helps to produce some physical facility we find today that many of the problems that we are facing in terms of uh, health the crisis that we are having are uh, a lot to do with just this problem of uh, not having the right daily routine or not having the right intake so if we can just do these three you know this uh, intake daily routine and labor even if we can do this part which has been labeled as 1a that can take care of the maximum uh, problems that we are seeing today and for the occasional time that we are not able to maintain these and we do get into a uh, slight disharmony or you know uh, having a slight problem we can fix it with uh, what is mentioned in 1b uh, doing some daily exercise in addition to the labor and perhaps doing some uh you know we mentioned postures for regulating the internal and external body organs an example of that would be yoga and uh, regulated breathing um as we do in pranayam so of course yoga and pranayam have lot of other benefits but uh, here since we are talking of health uh, they can help with uh, the health of the body and uh, Uh, this uh, current uh, problem that we are facing with covid and uh, so much of uh, panic has been there with the uh, um, vaccine and medication and uh, you know um, all this uh, using mask and all this uh, hygiene and washing hands of course those things are important but if we take care of uh, if we have this feeling of self regulation and we do some of these practices like pranayama and all it can build up the immunity tremendously so we don't fall prey to viruses and bacteria easily so with this one a and b we can pretty much largely stay healthy without uh, falling prey to illnesses and diseases and for the occasional time that we do uh, get into some temporary disharmony then we can think about taking uh, medication or uh, we can start with some home remedies which are there in our in our own kitchens so many of the spices and all those are useful um, beyond that we can use medication so that would be two in this chart and three or treatment is uh, you know when we are depending on something outside for uh, helping with the body function like using insulin in the case of diabetes or using a pacemaker when the heart doesn't work so really this is not uh, would not really be considered an option because uh, ultimately uh, we are 
not taking responsibility and we are suffering the consequences of these illnesses so by and large one a and b is sufficient to uh, keep us healthy for the most part if we have this feeling of self regulation so that's what i think i will just uh, end there thank you bhaiya now when we discuss the dimension of production and work then work essentially means the labor a human being does on the rest of nature and production is the physical facility that we obtain out of work right justice okay so again uh, discussing this uh, production further there are two pertinent questions one is what to produce and the other is how to produce so when you go to uh, practice any production activity we have to exactly make out what is the required physical facility right that we have got to produce and what will be the process for production so there are two basic requirements for the process of production one is that it has to be <coughs> mutually enriching <coughs> for the nature so when i am interacting with the nature i have to make sure that it's not only that i am getting physical facility from the nature but in that process the nature is also getting enriched and that is only possible when we have the cyclic process of nature so when you study about the nature we we'll see that there is a cycle in nature and when i obey the cycle in the nature then my production process is sustainable and it is mutually enriching also and secondly when i am going to produce with a team of people right so i have to ensure justice with all those with whom i am working so it has to be eco friendly as well as people friendly now when you when we go to study the nature we can see that there are certain orders in nature and these orders in nature are uh, fulfilling to each other so i have to understand the mutual fulfillment in the uh, various uh, orders of the nature so the process if it has to be mutually enriching that is cyclic that is also called as our tanshil process then it has to be cyclic as well as ensuring that every unit gets enriched in the process so for example when you observe the soil air water right being one set of units in the nature and plants being another set of units in the nature you can see that the soil air water is enriching the plants and the plants are enriching the soil air water so this mutually enriching cyclic process is already going on in the nature and we do not have to create it our task is only to pay attention to this understand this and then obey this if we are able to do this then our production process is going to be sustainable right again going further you can see that another set of units in the nature is when we have animals and birds and we can observe the correlation among all these uh, orders in the nature among all the units in the nature and we can see how they are mutually fulfilling each other we have taken several examples during the workshops so i'll not go into the examples but and i think all of us are even acquainted with this even while we are talking uh, in our regular courses when we are teaching environmental science so there also we get inputs like this so we are very much acquainted with this kind of cycle in the nature only that we have to include this in our imagination when we are planning our production processes because even though we are aware of or we are informed about this particular thing but while planning our uh, processes we are not able to take care of this and that is essentially because uh, we are not able to relate our own happiness to uh, ensuring the mutual fulfillment in the nature and unless that happens unless i am able to ensure uh, or unless i am able to see my own happiness my own prosperity directly related with the nature even though i am informed about the uh, correlation among the various orders in nature i am not going to abide by that right so this is very important so that's why you can see that when i have to participate in the nature right while all the other units in the nature are fulfilling me many times i deplete i exploit i destroy the other units in the nature so rajul bhai was giving some data also the way we have exploited air and you can see the ppm level is above 400 now while the desirable level is below 300 the soil uh, is becoming barren right the cultivable 
we are expanding the cultivable land day by day, but the land on which we were cultivating earlier is becoming barren. The water bodies are getting dried up, right? The forest coverage is going down. Many animals have become extinct. Birds have become extinct. And this is ultimately going to harm us. I came across certain data that was published in Times of India saying that if uh, someday all the birds, animals, insects die out, then human being can only survive for one week, one week or five days probably. So this kind of research has also been done, right? So in place of mastering the nature, in place of dominating, exploiting over the nature, we have to think of sustainable ways. So we human beings have to <clears throat> understand the mutual fulfillment in the nature and to live accordingly. That is to update the man-made processes to be cyclic and mutually enriching. Now, if you look at the requirement for self-sufficiency, let's say there is a family of 10 people and then, then uh, so availability, if you see in India, the land availability uh, is 2.73 acres of agricultural land for every 10 persons. So if you uh, try to conceive a family of 10, right, then that family with two acres of land and 40 man hours of work every day can produce Right, what is required for nurturing the body, protecting the body, and rightly utilizing the body. And it is, has also been found out that one human being in total lifetime requires four full grown trees. Right? That is the wood that is required by one person. And you just imagine how many trees can we plant in one lifetime. It's only that we have to make it a priority. We are not able to make it a top priority for ourselves. So 90% production can take place in the family and 10% by exchange or shared by the larger order. So you can at least have a clear vision of how a harmonious society will operate. So if you look at the availability of the resources today, so 2.73 acres of agricultural land is available for every family, which has 10 people. The total land is 32,87,590 square kilometers. The forest coverage is 21.6%. Agricultural Land available is 46.2%. The fallow is 8.6%. And built up or other areas, you can look at it. Look at that, that is 23.6%. Uh, Total population is 137 crore on this date, right? And one square kilometer makes 247.105. These are certain data which Rajul Bia has uh, uh, gathered. I think if Rajul Bia would like to comment something on this, most welcome. Yeah, would you like to add something to this? Uh, usually we have all this discussion in the practice session. And this data is collected uh, from publicly available data. So we can you know, actually do this for our own district, our own village, our own area, and then validate all this. So it is uh, uh, something which is, we just brought it from the practice session just to show as an example over here. Okay, Bia. Yeah. I think one task that comes out of this is that uh, we can try to relate our current state with this kind of uh, analysis. So, uh, yeah. are we able to map this analysis yeah. to the program that we are going to take up right now? Yeah. Many times uh, we get uh, such information, but that appears a very far-fetched uh, possibility and then we are not able to relate directly. So that is something where we can explore. You know, there is a work. there was a workshop going on in the district magistrate's office a few years back. And the question was, you know, how much rainfall is there in this area, in the area that they are expected to govern? And nobody knew out of those 20, 30 people who were there. You know, so we have uh, to have some basic data about our, uh, you know, place where we are uh, and so on, and related to the solution ultimately. So in this case, it is very easy to see that we have much more than what is required, even with this huge population. So we can certainly work for the solution. So that uh, that is the point of this. Thanks. Yeah. So going further, there is abundance of natural fresh water. 
so in in india if you see the total area is this much what was mentioned earlier and 890 mm average rainfall is there in india the total annual rainfall is 2925 cubic kilometer the total uh, annual uh, human water use is 230 cubic kilometer including urban and rural consumption if you look at the water storage then the forest uh, like through tree roots can store the maximum and the glaciers have a small percentage here and uh, bauxite mountains have the minimum percentage of storage here the bogs underground uh, aquifers can store this much 4 lakh 33000 cubic kilometer then we have lakes and ponds and again forests and there is a natural distribution of water here through rain through rivers and streams over ground also distributes silt fish then rivers and streams are there underground uh, we would like to comment on this again some more details about this so these are all available you know we can people can look at it i mean i don't want to comment on this the next slide is showing what has happened due to human intervention or yeah. mostly due to human intervention all these red things yeah so the rainfall which was uh, all over the country and certainly it was you know not constant but what has uh, happened is it has become almost erratic so for example in 2014 the uh, the rainfall was only 59% of the expected or average rainfall similarly this water use is increasing Uh, dumping of waste in the rivers in the seas and so on so many things are <laughs> going on that we can see and the water storage part has been seriously uh, affected by deforestation by this global warming and by you know our uh, insatiable uh, want of these materials so like aluminium we have been mining Uh, aluminium and those areas which had rivers flowing out of those uh, for example the river narbada they are becoming more and more dry and in the particularly in the cities we are covering up these bogs which were you know taking the water and putting it in the ground and so many things you know so all that is uh, marked in red over here and we have to see this not just as a problem but also as a possibility of what we can do how we can live with this mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature so i don't mean to alarm anybody but it is important for us to um, you know be aware of what we are doing and then find solutions and there are solutions that there are many solutions which when we do the practice session then we have a lot of solutions so for example for water even in areas like rajasthan people like rajinder kumar ji are working uh, for uh, you know how to manage this water how to uh, sort of uh, thrive with the amount of water that is there so there are for example huge uh, bawlis that are there in rajasthan and the lay of the land below the surface is almost mapped out to see where the water whatever water is falling will flow there so there are many interesting uh, solutions uh, uh, traditional solutions uh, and modern solutions so we can look at that with that you know that uh, full awareness yes okay bhaiya so going further uh, we already talked about justice so justice is recognition of human human relationship its fulfillment and evaluation leading to mutual happiness so we uh, talked about uh, relationship in detail and i'll not repeat the same content here so we started only we are having a recap of all this not talking about preservation <coughs> 
preservation is recognition of the human rest of nature relationship so justice has to do with human human relationship preservation has to do with the relation between human and the rest of nature so are we able to recognize the relationship rightly and then comes its fulfillment and then evaluation and we have to observe whether our interaction with the nature is leading to mutual prosperity or not mutual enrichment or not so preservation essentially means enrichment protection and right utilization right so when we are able to have a program for preservation then on one hand we are able to ensure prosperity for a human being at the same time we are able to enrich the nature protect the nature and rightly utilize the nature so preservation of rest of nature if you see so what is fundamental among enrichment protection or right utilization that we can make out so right utilization of nature comes first so wood of food uh, for full grown trees is enough for one person's needs from birth to death including the pyre wood so how many trees can we plant in your lifetime at least 10 trees or even one tree on every birthday leading up to 60 or 70 trees so there is one person professor parmeshwar rao of himanchali village and he has planted already 5000 trees in each of the 100 villages near himanchali so this kind of potential every human being has it's only that we have to assign some priority to this we have to assign priority to the nature we have to assign priority for this preservation so one thing to observe here is that everything that is there in the nature has to be right utilized then comes protection and then comes enrichment not everything i have to enrich so i do not have to enrich air but if we deplete the uh, proper content of the air then we have got to enrich it again so if you are also able to uh, rightly utilize the resources available then there is less need for protection and there is still less need for enrichment because the resources are already available right so we can start with right utilization <clears throat> now how do i go about doing this so presently if you see in this session we are sitting in our homes so we can try to make out all the facilities that are available in the house today and then we can see whether we are rightly utilizing that or not those resources or not we can see whether we are <clears throat> protecting those resources properly or not and we will see that only a part of the resources that we are utilizing in the houses has to be enriched okay so there we can uh, have an uh, kind of articulation now the next uh, dimension is exchange and storage so exchange essentially means exchange of physical facility with a view of mutual fulfillment and one thing to be taken care of is it has not to be with obsession of profit or exploitation so many a times uh, and this kind of questions do appear while conducting the course also that many times when we talk about profit or uh, profit maximization right we need to understand what does that mean <clears throat> when we are talking about profit maximization in economics or in uh, management right is it something to do with obsession for profit or is it something to do with the right utilization is it something to do with justice in human human relationship so all those things have to be clear similarly when you talk about the storage of physical facility then it has to be with a view of mutual fulfillment and not with obsession for profit or accumulation again we have discussed these terms so uh, in the online workshops we are not discussing so rajul bhai please suggest should we go about detailing uh, all the dimensions right now or we can take up later Yeah, in the next lecture we are taking up some of okay. this details Fine. this is giving an overview yeah going into the basic questions that come up here and then going into more detail particularly the detail about at each level what uh, what would be appropriate certainly yeah so to sum up a society is composed of families living together and what is desirable is uh, living in a relationship of mutual fulfillment and we have a common goal and these are the four common goals right understanding and right feeling that is happiness in every individual prosperity in every family fearlessness that is trust in society and coexistence that is mutual fulfillment in the nature and existence and we can also observe that family is the basic unit of society society is composed of families then group of families and if you look at the building blocks then 
families make the group of families group of families make the village so village is just a cluster of group of families right and that can be also looked at as a family and traditionally also if you see we have been treating this whole fam village as a kind of family then we can have group of uh, village families and then we can have towns and so on so right we can go up to world family so every individual is responsible or self disciplined and self motivated by common values participating in the larger order toward a common human goal and through the participation of every family in the society in the five dimensions of social systems the common human goal is fulfilled for all right from family order to the world family order and this can become a tradition generation after generation so the current civilization is largely based on the assumption that human being is the body so this is something that we addressed uh, in detail in the previous lectures also and then there is a notion that happiness is derived primarily from sensual pleasure or by getting feelings from others and hence accumulation of physical facility domination exploitation has become the core of socio economic systems right so some kind of revamping is of course required but we have to go uh, about this by developing the human being first because we human beings are only making the systems in the society unless we have a clear vision we have the clarity we are not going to sustain any kind of transformation that is attempted for in the society so that was a sum up of the content that we discussed so far we can reflect on this